Welcome everybody to this case study. I recently did a blog post which was titled April Fooled by Evita. Now when we go through analyst reports, we find this metric very often and analysts tend to evaluate companies based on their EBITDA, how the EBITDA is growing and they also use the enterprise value over EBITDA multiple to see whether a company is expensive or a company is cheap. Now I had discussed in the blog post that there is a risk in looking at the EBITDA figure. It actually ignores a lot of facts which are very very crucial in really understanding a business. Now today I'm going to discuss a case study. The name of the company is Hype Beast. It's actually a pretty interesting business headquartered in Hong Kong and they are kind of trendsetters when it comes to street fashion. Run by a young team and they have grown exceptionally well. You usually don't see companies growing so fast. However, let's take a look and see is everything okay with the company. Now just look at how their revenue figures have grown. Over the last four years, the revenues have shot up from 70, almost 73 million Hong Kong dollars to 385 million Hong Kong dollars. That's an over 50% compounded annual rate. That's phenomenal. And even the operating income and the net income have grown phenomenally well. Now, a lot of people are very excited about this company and by the way I also like this company I have been a shareholder of this company I, I had a small position in this company and I think it's quite an interesting business look how amazingly their EBITDA figures have grown over the last three years it has grown by almost 5.7 times that's just fantastic however Let's take a look at the balance sheet and see if everything is fine there. Now, you know, as expected, when a company is growing so fast, their working capital numbers will also grow, right? I mean, the company will need more and more capital to run the business. So there is nothing surprising there. So as expected, you can see the receivables have grown over the years and the inventory ha has also grown. Now, just a bit about this company. They have two lines of businesses. One is their digital media business where they produce amazing digital advertisements for big brands like Adidas, Porsche, Louis Vuitton and many similar luxury brands like that. They have another business which is an e-commerce business where they curate hand-picked brands which are very popular with the younger generation and they command a premium price on these products. But this literally sell like hotcakes. As you can see their inventory figures have also grown quite a bit over the last four years. Now here are the accounts payable figures which have not grown as fast as the, the inventory and the receivable figures have grown and as a result let's see what happened to their working capital. The formula that we will use for working capital is receivables plus inventory minus accounts payable. This company they announced their results on a six monthly basis. The latest figures that are available with us are as of September 2018. Now they announced the results in March but I completely ignored the, the March results because they don't expose their cash flow statements and evaluating a company without their cash flow statements it's completely meaningless. So as we are waiting for their cash flow statements to be made public which will be done in the month of August. Let's look at their receivables and inventory figures which they announced in September 2018 and we can see while the receivables jumped the inventory literally almost doubled which means to grow their revenue they need to carry more and more inventory. This is for their e-commerce business. Problem with their digital media business is that they work with very large brands. And they actually do not have too much negotiating power when it comes to making their collections for the services provided. As a result, their receivable figures keep going up. If we look at the liability figures, we see that the company had to recently take on some debt. Now, here is the problem. Since IPO 2014, 
to support a revenue growth of about 51% CAGR. Their working capital requirements grew by almost 60%. This divergence does not get captured by the EBITDA metric. So while the EBITDA numbers look amazingly good, jumping from 10 million Hong Kong dollars to 57 million Hong Kong dollars in a three year period, look what happened to their cash flow numbers. Their operating cash flow, which was growing till 2017, became negative in 2018. And that happened because of the changes in working capital. So while the net income figures grew, the working capital required to support the net income that grew faster. And as a result, the company is not being able to generate any operating cash flow or any free cash flow. Now, my objective of creating this video is not to hammer this company. This is actually a good business and they probably will pull up their socks and you know get their house in order. In fact, I met the management last year and I had a chat with the CFO and they mentioned there that they're putting a lot of focus on collections. And you know, I have confidence that they'll probably get it right. Even the e-commerce business, yeah, they're experimenting with different brands, different products. In fact, they have taken off quite a few brands from their line of offering because they feel that it's not aligned with what they stand for. And they curate the brands that they offer. So I feel that eventually they'll get it right. But the point here is to demonstrate that it's very misleading to just focus on the revenue numbers or on the earning numbers and especially the EBITDA numbers because the EBITDA does not capture these problems which a lot of growing fast growing companies go through. Uh, one is the EBITDA figures they do not capture the depreciation or the amortization expenses which are real expenses. The EBITDA figures does not talk about any working capital changes which a business might be going through. And that's where a lot of new investors, a lot of novice investors end up getting trapped. To summarize, it's very, very important to look under the bonnet and to see how efficiently the company is being run. The company might be growing, but is that growth coming at the expense of efficiency? Is that growth a good quality growth? So these are the questions that we need to ask when we are analyzing a business.